Hello and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis and in this video I'm reviewing the reviews of The Doctor. So, Juliet Stevenson is The Doctor. And if you clicked on this to find out more about Jodie Whittaker's replacement on Doctor Who, you're in the wrong place. The Doctor I'm talking about is a 1912 play that's been revived by Robert Icke. And when I say revived, I mean given new life. The new version examines identity politics and cancel culture. And in this respect, it follows hot on the heels of the opening of the National Theatre's revival of The Crucible, Arthur Miller's play about the Salem witch trials, which also analyses what happens when a group tramples justice and reason to enforce their power. And if you want to see my review of that, the link is just above me. This production of The Doctor first saw light of day at the Almeida, which is where I saw and enjoyed it. After the Covid interruption, it's finally made it to the West End, the Duke of York's theatre to be specific. Now sometimes a transfer to a bigger venue reduces the impact, but not in this case. As you'll see from this roundup of the major critics' reviews, they're unanimous in their praise. So, what's the story of the Doctor? Well, a doctor refuses to allow a Catholic priest to give last rites to a young woman dying after a botched abortion. She thinks it's a sensible medical decision, and the reaction at first is minor, but soon things escalate within the hospital and then in the social media-dominated world beyond. What to the doctor is an objective and sensible decision is analysed and pulled apart by people with their own agendas and not necessarily much knowledge of the situation. Her Jewishness, which she hardly thinks about, is seen by some as significant, with anti-Semitism clearly apparent. Her authority as a doctor is challenged, and before we know where we are, the funding of the hospital is under threat. Although she may be arrogant and authoritarian, the doctor is an expert, but that doesn't make her immune to cancel culture. Highly relevant to today, uh, which the reviews are quick to point out. The themes of this play chime louder than ever in a time when racial and anti-Semitic bigotries thrive and identity politics have become the stuff of gladiator fights, says Arifa Akbar in The Guardian. A deeply thought-provoking and moving take on the instant weaponization of identity markers in our contemporary moment, especially when those markers enter intersectional relationships with one another, says Mert Dalek of the Broadway world. You might want to press pause to read that again. Or you could settle for the Daily Telegraph's more concise headline, A Brilliant Interrogation of Cancel Culture. The Evening Standard's Nick Curtis calls it a dazzling analysis of identity, fake news and social media pylons and says, No play in the past ten years has felt more tense, challenging and intellectually provoking than this one. Dominic Maxwell in The Times is also thinking in ten-year periods, describing it as the most politically pertinent play of the decade. He helpfully sums up his review in the first paragraph with a string of adjectives. An involving, stimulating, moving, handsomely staged and exquisitely acted night at the theatre. OK, there'll be more about the intellectual arguments and theatrical wonders in a moment, but what about the star, Juliet Stevenson? Did she shine? Well, she certainly did. The Guardian says she shows counterintuitive brilliance, starting at top volume and dialing down to present the quiet tragedy of a remarkable doctor who bears the fatal flaw of arrogance. The Times describes it as a stunning lead performance. The Standard calls it a bracingly rigorous central performance. The stage, getting all Game of Thrones, found it a performance of ice and fire. Broadway World calls it a masterclass in acting. Perfection is Dominic Cavendish's word in his Telegraph review. But the play is not as simple as she's right and her enemies are wrong. The writer plunges you into the heart of a moral and emotional quandary from the off, says the Times. The Doctor eschews binaries and turns into a richly layered thing as bigger racial, religious and gender politics come into play, says the Guardian, adding all the arguments are nuanced and thoughtful. To underline the point, she describes how she and her companion took totally opposing views on the Doctor's decision. And that's just one of the reasons the critics are impressed by the writer-director Robert Icke. The Guardian intones, 
you are unlikely to see anything in the West End that comes with the same amounts of tension, combative intellectual complexity and sheer bare tooth drama. And getting all dramatic herself, the play forces the complex ethical ground beneath our feet to rumble and shake. The Telegraph is so impressed by Ike that he invents a new word to describe him. One of our brain boxiest director adapters, he says. The standard too reaches out for superlatives and even gets his measuring stick out, saying he seems to think about things ten times more deeply than most directors. He continues, the revelation of each supporting character's real, i.e. fictional, ethnicity or gender is done with microscopic skill. I've never felt more thoroughly and usefully wrong-footed by a play. That's because of one particularly notable aspect of Ike's production, deliberately using gender-blind and colour-blind casting, or what David Benedict in the stage calls non-literal casting, explaining, with women sometimes playing men and the casting non-racially specific, Ike makes drama out of the gap between the ideas audiences form when introduced to each character and what turns out to be the truth about them. As the Times puts it, you can't tell what colour or sex a character is until the story makes it clear. So we become active participants in the process of decoding people's identities. Telegraph makes a similar point. Our own bias gets probed. The mode of portrayal heightens the provocation uh, that an argument, even in the realm of science, can be affected by who makes it. The technical aspects of the production support Ike's vision. Uh, for example, the use of a 1960s police phone box that's much larger on the inside. Oh no, sorry, that's the other Doctor. Um, Hildegard Bechtler's set of a curved, unadorned plywood rear wall and angular clinic furniture increases the sense of exposure, says the Telegraph. Tom Gibbon's ambient soundtrack is described by the Times as unsettling yet hypnotic. Natasha Chiver's lighting is pitched for stark, dramatic highs, says the Guardian. So do these critics have any reservations? Well, the Evening Standard says, Ike sometimes sets up grievances and opposing belief systems in a way that's rather obvious, and he also lets most of his characters express themselves in long, shouty speeches. And the stage talks about the production's self-consciousness, adding that the dilemma between defining personal identity and public duty was similarly discussed in the safer, far more solid, The Southbury Child. Incidentally, I saw and reviewed this impressive play at Chichester and agree that while it's a more conventional play than The Doctor, it's highly effective in its examination of a similar subject. And the link to my review of that is on the screen right now. Some concluding thoughts from the critics. It is a complex, provocative evening that is rich in empathy and intelligence alike, sums up the Times. In its stimulating experimentalism, it's just what the Doctor ordered to help resuscitate the cerebral life of our post-viral, musically bloated West End, says the somewhat superior Telegraph. It is, in the end, a captivating and profound argument against absolutes, says the Guardian, emphatically. It was, for the standard, a very potent evening indeed. And let me finish with Broadway World. From start to finish, this is theatre at its finest. Unmissable. Unmissable indeed. But I must have missed something when I saw it at the Almeida, because I only gave it three stars. Um, to sum up my view, I, I found the plot contrived, and some of the characters seem more like ciphers for the arguments than real people. But if you want to know more detail about my thoughts, there's a link to my full review above me now. I did think Juliet Stevenson was great as the Doctor, but I don't know how she'd do in a fight against aliens. Oh no, sorry, I'm getting confused with Doctor Who again. Just to be clear, Jodie Whittaker's replacement is not Juliet Stevenson. It's Shuti Gadwa who will be on the front line against identity politics and cancel culture. If you want to be the first to see my latest reviews, please subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, where I post some nice pictures of the theatres I visit, Twitter and Facebook. If you prefer reading to viewing, please visit my website, OneMinuteTheatreReviews.co.uk. Thank you for watching.